Hello everyone, my name is Tomer Feierreisen and I'm happy to introduce you to our group's work about using deep neural prio for intelligent reflecting surface configuration suitable for wideband communication using the OFDM protocol. Our group consists of researchers from the CIPL laboratory in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computers at the Israeli Technion and from the Faculties of Electrical Engineering at Tel Aviv University and the KTH or Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. Our work is based on the Intelligent Reflecting Surface, or IRS, which is a two-dimensional array of passive elements, each of which can change the phase of the signal reflected from it and attenuate its amplitude. Thus, with the right tuning of the array, it is possible to create kind of constructive interference of the carrier wave on the receiving device, thus significantly improving the information rate transfer to it. This is especially effective when it comes to high-frequency communications, where there is a large attenuation of the transmitted signal. When we want to compare the IRS with a DF relay that decodes and retransmits the signal, we can see in the figure taken from Professor Bjornsson's paper that while for small surfaces the DF achieves more successful spectral efficiency, as the surface area increases, so it can be seen that the IRS spectral efficiency exceeds the DF's one. Apart from that, the element in the IRS being passive also contributes to lower energy consumption. In this figure, you can see the system model. The user does not have a line of sight for the transmitter, but the IRS directs the transmitted signal beam directly to him. In our problem model, we use signals transmitted in wideband OFDM modulation. So in the frequency domain, the signal transmitted from the base station is received in the, in the device according to the following equation, where Z is the received signal, HD is the directed uncontrollable channel from the base station to the receiver, VA and VB are the channels from the base station to the IRS and from the IRS to the receiver respectively. Theta is the change made to the signal in the IRS itself, X is the transmitted signal, and N is an additive white Gaussian noise. In our problem, each element can change the phase of the signal reflected from it without changing the amplitude of the wave. While all users do not have a line of sight to the transmitter, some have a line of sight to the IRS and some do not. We'll mark them as loss or end loss according to their line of sight to the IRS only. Our goal is to find for each user the IRS configuration that maximizes the data transmission rate from the base station to it according to the formula for the data transmission rate in the OFDA modulated transmissions. When we come to review the previous works in the field, it is evident that this is an active field of research with many studies being published on it. Several heuristic solutions have been proposed for the problem we defined in the previous slide, and among them, two stands out. SDR is a solution based on optimizing a non-convex problem with the help of semi-definite relaxation methods. This is a good solution that achieves high rates and high results, but is difficult to calculate and is too expensive in matter of calculation times for this problem. STM, or strongest stop maximization, is a solution that tries to get optimized by maximizing energy at the largest stop in the total channel. This is a slightly less good solution than SDR in matter of data transmission rate, but it is much faster than the SDR. Therefore, we will compare ourselves to the STM solution. Another problem reviewed in past papers is the channel estimation problem, which we solved in our previous work, and we encourage you to read it in our paper. So let's talk about our solution. Our solution uses the concept of priors to simplify the problem. Prior is the use of prior knowledge of the problem solutions to seek solutions in more confined space. For example, Using prior knowledge about natural image smoothness can help improving deep convolutional network performances, and using low total variation in order to improve the complexity of finding time domain filters prove itself to be very useful, etc. etc. There are many examples for that. In previous works, we have seen the use of IRS configurations, in which they search for good configurations among those that perform signal steering only so that the surface is arranged column by column, as can be seen in this picture. The concept of neural prior was first introduced in the article Deep Image Prior in 2018. 
The main idea is to use deep neural networks as regulators for image processing tasks with no training data. In fact, almost self-evidently, the output of the networks is forced to be the output of deep convolutional networks. So what does this ultimately give us? It can be shown that the output of convolutional networks tend to be smooth with self-similarity due to the fact that the network kernels do not depend on the location on the image. It is also tend to avoid local minima points in the loss function due to over-parameterization in the network. That gave this method strong power in solving problems like image noising, image painting, etc., as can be seen in the images in the, on the slide. In short time, Deep Image Prior has opened a new field in machine learning that is not limited to image processing. For example, previous works have used the neural prior method also in audio processing and in estimation of reconstruction kernels to create super resolution for multiple images. In details, what we are going to do is to create a neural network whose input is random Gaussian noise and whose output is a complete IRS configuration. We then define a price function to examine the network output and initialize the DNN weights randomly. Then we will feed the network with random Gaussian noise and check the configuration at the network output. We will optimize the weights of the network so that, with the help of the chain law, the next output will be optimized on the loss function. Now we will repeat steps three, three and four until the network converges and one configuration is selected. Our network architecture is presented in this slide. The loss function is defined as minus the data transmission rate between the base station and the receiver when it depends on the direct and indirect channel as well as the IRS phase shifts. We will try to minimize the loss by choosing the best configuration for transmitting the information to the user. In the network architecture, we use two subnetworks that operate in parallel and are combined into one IRS configuration. The first subnet receives a random noise vector and shape a vector from it which represents the lines of an IRS sized array. The vector will create a configuration with fixed rows by putting it W times side by side. The second subnet does the same thing but yield a configuration where the columns are fixed, as seen again in the slide. The two configurations are then merged using a convolution layer into a single configuration. In each of the two subnetworks, a large number of fully connected layers are used to escape from local minima points according to the principle of overparameterization. For example, in this slide you can see the output of the first subnet having the fixed rows in figure A, the output of the second subnet having the fixed columns in figure B, and the combination of the two subnetworks in figure C. Here we compare two configurations, one created using the STM algorithm and one created from our network for the same users. It can be seen that the configuration that our network yields is indeed smoother and indeed contains self-similarity, just as we predicted in our heuristics of neural pile. The data we worked on was created in a novel simulator published by Professor Bjornsson last year. We tested ourselves on 50 different users scattered in varying locations in a room. When we use IRS with N elements, we used N pilot signals for N different configurations to evaluate the channels, direct and indirect, for each user. We used a constant pilot signal on all the subcarriers. When during the pilot transmission, the IRS matrix was arranged according to the columns of the Hadamard matrix, in which the sum of all the rows is equal to zero except the sum of the first row. Details of our channel estimation algorithm can be found in our paper published in the last IEEE Comcast conference, and we are encouraging you to read it. The results of our algorithm are presented here for users with and without line of sight to the IRS, depending on the number of elements in the IRS. Our results are compared to the results obtained from the IRS configuration created by the STM algorithm. It can be seen that our algorithm achieves better results than the STM algorithm 
for every number of elements in the IRS, with the gap being more significant for user who is out line of sight to the IRS. The summary of the results is presented here in a table for an IRS with 4096 elements. It can be seen that our model managed to outperform the STM algorithm in both categories. Another important element in designing a model for using the IRS is the question of reconfiguring the array after the user's movement in space. In the red graph, you can see the ratio between the data transmission rate obtained from a configuration that came out of our model and the rate obtained after walking a distance of several meters from the initial point where the user stood. Each curve represents a number of different epochs of opt optimization, so it can be seen that after only 25 epochs of training, we have reached the same data transmission rate. The left graph shows the number of optimization epochs required to cause the network to yield a configuration in which the data transmission rate is 99% of the rate achieved by the final configuration of the process. One can see in red line the number of epochs required to get the initial configuration when starting from randomly initialized network weights. Below it, in a blue line, you can see the number of epochs required to continue training the network from the previous configuration after the person has moved from where the network has been adjusted to as a function of the walking distance. This graph emphasizes that the network retraining time is significantly lower for changing the configuration for a person movement in the room, and in fact, allows the use of this model for real practical cases. In this graph, we show the most significant advantage of our model over the STM algorithm. Because our generative model is very simple and does not require long training, the time required to calculate it is significantly lower than the STM calculation time. The algorithms ran with the same data on the NVIDIA RTX A5000 GPU, averaging 50 different users, 25 with line of sight to the IRS and 25 without. In doing so, we show that the neural prior model is superior to the STM algorithm both in terms of results and in terms of runtime required to calculate it. In conclusion, our article uses the Intelligent Reflecting Surface IRS, which is a very promising technology for high-frequency sixth-generation communications. We have shown the first use of neural prior method in the communications world. We have also reached state-of-the-art results when our model is faster than the existing heuristic algorithms. Our model is also converges very quickly and allows continuous use for moving users in practical use cases. On behalf of our group, I thank you for listening and invite you to read our paper. We will be happy to answer your questions and share with you our future works. Thank you very much.